It's time for the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX. On your radio at AM 940 and online at MyWithersRadio.com. Recognized by the Illinois Broadcasters Association as one of the premier radio feature programs in the state, you're about to roam the region with more guests and content courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. Live from the powerhouse, the Saturday Sports Show starts now. Very pleasant Saturday morning on the first week of January here on the Saturday Sports Show as we get ready to go in the year 2013. Hopefully everybody's having a happy new year so far. Denny Zerwinski, Chris Hugo in the studio, Jeff Crow pushing the buttons, Mike Richardson on assignment. Brought to you by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. i got to say it. I have to, yeah, have to say it. A bevy of guests this morning. Of course, the high school basketball season after a couple days off with the New Year's holiday in the middle of this past week. Slowed things down for a couple of days. Holiday tournaments finished up on New Year's Eve. A couple days off. Back to action. Conference play. Today's shootout tournament. Beginning day of midwinter. It's kind of a cluster right now because only one full week remains before the start of midwinter tournament season. And eventually, next week on the show, it'll be a bevy of who's who and who's where as far as where tournaments are. And it is a frosty little morning here in the King City. Not bad for January 5th. We have to accept that. And Chris Hugo joins us now. And it's one of those deals here where we're getting ready to go. This is I, this is what people call the meat and potatoes part of the schedule because conference play starts and everybody starts playing their rivals. Well, and, and it is, and you, you know, we start looking ahead now to midwinter tournament time as well. There's that quick turnaround this year, and it, I know people probably think, well, you know, your holiday tournaments ended on 29th. You're going into the second, third, third week into January like you always are. But just because of how the Christmas played out and and how the days of the week play out, you know, we start midwinter play for most tournaments on the 14th. We have the Midland Trail Girls Tournament coming up next week. We'll talk about that later on in the program, but. You know, we're we getting that crunch time of the season where you're going to start seeing games every night, especially on our schedule, as we try to continue to bring you the best assortment of high school basketball on the radio. Then, of course, that basketball, of course, on WMIX, on FM, on AM, and at WMIXSports.com. As things are going to start picking up here, as Chris said, January is a grinding month. You have, obviously, games every night with conference play kicking in. You have the seasonal shootouts going on. Uh, you know, led this week, the Chester Girls Tournament started. Carterville Girls Tournament starts today. You roll into that week next week with the Midland Trail Conference Tournament. The week of the 14th, you have all the midwinter tournaments around Southern Illinois that will go on. The week after that will be the GEC Tournament uh, at, that also plays a, as a conference tournament. So we will have tournaments running through almost January 25th, 26th, where conference tournaments and everything are being played and are going on. And that's what everybody likes to get out, and hopefully the inclement weather will stay away. There won't be any issues and get a lot of basketball games in in January. Well, that would be nice. And, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of tournaments dodged a bullet last week with all the winter precip that came through, and that was one of our concerns. And I know he talked to Wes Schott, principal of Sestervillier High School, last week, and I know he talked to him about, you know, what do you do and, and, and how do you go about these situations when faced with them. And, you know, I thought many of the tournaments handled it properly, and I think we talked about that, about that either on X95 during CHT coverage or we talked about it during a Rams game as well. Where, you know, Carbondale, I thought, handled, handled it the best they could last week, of course, where they had to play on a Sunday with so many teams traveling in and out of state. Um, Cesar, you know, and El Dorado handled, handled it as well as they could as well. Playing, going into Monday, they had teams all in the 618, except for El Dorado, the team from uh, Union County, Kentucky, Kentucky or Tennessee, wh- whichever it was. So, you know, that only one team that was impacted by that, they were in and out pretty early. And, you know, Sesser bumped the games up to early morning and the championship at 3.30, which allowed everybody to go about their New Year's Eve plans as well. So I thought all in all, with the winter weather, everybody handled it the best they could. I think everybody handled the best they could. I mean, some people probably couldn't make a couple of games because of the scheduling, because of work, as that may the case may be, is, you know, with everything going on. But I think everything was handled flawlessly. And, Again, don't think that Mother Nature won't try to stick her nose in again here in the near future. It's January 5th only, a lot of winter time left to go, and you know that's one of those deals. You just have to be ready to go. Speaking of flawlessly and, and things that are great, I thought we had a magnificent scoreboard up last night on WMIXSports.com. For those of you that want to check it out on your, on your mobile phone or your tablet or your PS3 or your Xbox 360 or your Wii or you know whatever device you access the Internet with, whatever, even if you have an old-school web TV, uh, our website is friendly. 
for all of that. Let's check out those scores. And those scores are in one South 7 game last night. Cahokia beat Altoff 61-44. to Midland Trail Conference, of course, we did a game on the FM side last night and on the internet at WMIXports.com. Waltonville beat Weber Township 45-35. to That was last night. Woodlawn beat Sandoval 86-34. North Clay beat Wayne City 50-32. to Black Diamond, Christopher beat ZR in the Battle of 148, 59-36. Goreville over Trico, 73-68, come from behind, went at home for the Black Cats. Elder Raid over Carmi, 71-67. And Johnston City knocked Vianna off the tracks, 70-43. In the River to River, Ohio last night, Murphy beat Heron, 38-36. Massac won on the road at Benton, 66-46. Harrisburg beat Frankfurt, 76-54. All the road teams winning last night in the Ohio side. Pinckneyville went on the road and beat DeCoyne, 65-38. Sparta beat Carterville 62-51. Nashville beat AJ 53-47. To our friends to the east in the Little Illini, Robinson over Powell Hutt 82-30. Casey over Newton 74-67. Flora beat Lawrenceville 66 double nickel. Red Hill beat Cumberland 48-39. Olney beat Edwards County 69-45. Marshall beat Oblong. 55-36. In the Apollo Conference to the north, Mount Zion over Salem 63-50. Effingham over Paris 57-39. Charleston beat Mattoon, 49-46. National Trail, Dietrich over Altamont, 73-68. Cahokia Conference, Carlisle over Redbud, 72-42. Central beat Columbia, 51-35. New Athens over Marissa Coulterville, 60-35. Freeburg over Westland, 50-37. Steelville over Lebanon, 54-47. Southwestern Conference, Beast beat Collinsville in OT at Collinsville, 52-51. West over Alton, 65-52. Edwardsville over O'Fallon, 75-61. And East Side beat Granite City, 76-45. In the Mississippi Valley, Waterloo beat Mascouda, 55-52. Two non-conference games of note of interest. Marion beat Cairo, 74-65 on the road at Cairo. And Jabot beat Modern Day in the Battle of the Privates, 60-59. to All those scores located at... WMIXports.com, our new website, right there where you can see them and find them where you need them. If you didn't hear them the first time, you can go to WMIXports.com and read those and look at those at your leisure. Well, and the great thing about it, it's organized, it's neat, it's not sloppy, and you can find pretty well any score that you want uh, from around the area. So pretty cool thing there, WMIXports.com is where you'll find that. St. Anthony Shootout coming up today, the Mount Vernon Rams T-Town Wind Shoes coming up at 3.45 p.m on WMIX-FM. We'll talk with Mount Vernon Rams head coach Scott Gamber about that after the break here on the Saturday Sports Show presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Back after these. Have you ever stopped to think about how much time we do not have during the day? Hi, Roy Schmidt, Ford dealer at Ford Square and Chrysler dealer at King City Chrysler, Mount Vernon. How often do you forget to make that phone call for an oil change or to schedule a tune-up? I'm excited to tell you that you can schedule your service appointments online at Ford Square and King City Chrysler. Whether the workday is too chaotic to pick up the phone or basketball practice just won't allow you to stop by, we have you covered. Log on to FordSquare.com or KingCityChrysler.com to schedule your service appointment. Or, if you prefer to hear a friendly voice, feel free to call us anytime. We've made amazing quality service unbelievably easy at Ford Square in King City Chrysler Center, Mount Vernon. You can count on us. Also, find us on Facebook and Twitter. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency... Call 911. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us, of course, as we speak with Mount Vernon Rams head coach Scott Gamber, who appears currently at Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. We'll work on getting Scott Gamber back on the horn, of course. Mountford and Rams, I, I, I think suffice to say, disappointed last week with the loss to Alton in the Constellation semifinals and uh, lost 52-51 to Alton last Saturday in the CHS Annex. But, you know, 
you, you have to wait a week to play again, but you play a tough team like the T-Town Wooden Shoes, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes down today. Well, it will be interesting. A battle of Class 2A and Class 3, I think a very good game for both teams in this case. And on a decently neutral floor, even though that T-Town plays a lot more games there and is only about five minutes away, it'll be a tough game. It'll be a hard one for Mount Vernon as they uh, go up there and basically play a road game at St. Anthony. And, and, and pretty well. You know, T-Town very familiar with St. Anthony's gym. Speaking of which, Scott Gamber joins us now. Scott, good morning. Morning. How are you guys doing? You know, I'm doing pretty good. Central A Holiday Tournament, of course, came to a close last week. Now you look forward to the T-Town Wooden Shoes and uh, a matchup that we had talked about over the course probably of the past year about T-Town being on the schedule in some fashion. And now the Rams will battle the Wooden Shoes today at 4 p.m. in the St. Anthony Shootout. And that's a great matchup for a team like us. It is. I'm excited about it. I, I, um, I, don't, know if, I don't know if we've ever played T-Town before. I, it's a, I've tried to ask few people if they can remember Mount Vernon playing T-Town and, and nobody could you know off the top of their head so I'm excited they're, they're a very quality program um, they have a good coach and they're, they're a good team this year I've, I've gotten to see them play a couple times and I've been very impressed with what I've seen and it's kind of amazing just you can almost no matter what year it is you can almost say exactly what T-Town is going to have as far as personnel they're able to to keep it rolling year in and year out. Well, speaking of keep and rolling, it's been a week since the holiday tournaments have been done. You stick in a New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. How's been the mindset and work ethic and how much work has been done by the Rams this week to get ready for this weekend? You know, it's been good. It's been really good. It's, we, we've had a full week to practice, and and that's been great. You know, this our, our schedule this year was very uh, front-loaded, so you know, this was one of the few weeks where we've gotten an entire week um, to prepare and, and practice for this one team. So, so that was kind of nice. And, um, you know, it, it's coming up. We, we're going to have that quite a bit here in the second half of the year. There's not a whole lot of um, weeks in the second half where we have multiple games. There's a lot of Friday night only um, games in the second half of our season. And you know, I think that's a good thing. I think we, we need – we need to have a little practice time, and um, I know this week's been really nice. And, and, you know, we come up, we have Carbondale next week, and that's going to be nice to have a whole week to prepare for them. And, um, and then, you know, it's, it's just not used to – it doesn't seem like we're, – we're at the Salem tournament almost already, and it doesn't seem like it, it should be here yet, um, but we are. And you are, and that's the thing that brings up is the way the schedule works this year with holidays being in the middle of the week. You get one full week uh, besides these couple of days here the teams are playing, and then you're in the holiday tournament time or midwinter tournament time. Is that a little different way to kind of get kids up and excited knowing that that midwinter tournament is just around the corner? It is. It is. It's very different from everything. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of like, like that. It just seems like seems like when you get to the midwinter tournament, I mean, you're really on the down stretch. Um, and you, you know, you're, we're going to start talking about regional seeds here pretty soon. And, I mean, this season's just flying by. And, and speaking, oh, well, speaking of flying by, of course, this will go on. And then, of course, once that tournament gets over the grind of conference playing because it happens so fast the conference schedule and that last part of that schedule is going to go on for a while is this a case of the dog days of the meat part of the schedule is going to be around a lot longer a lot tougher to deal with it is you know our, our conference you know it, it seems, seems like we haven't had a conference game for, for quite a while but you know our conference is, is so tough this year just because I think it's very balanced you know across the board so there, there's going to be like you said, there's going to be a lot of games after that midwinter tournament, and they're going to every single one of them is going to be a battle. Um, it's it's just our, our leagues, our leagues as balanced as I've seen it. I, I think any team, you know, can beat any team on any given night, and I think they've kind of you've kind of seen that already this year, and I think you'll see more of that in the second half. Before we dive into Carbondale coming up on Friday night, the 11th, T Town today, four o'clock, St. Anthony shootout, and. You know, T-Town, a team last year, I think, went 29-3, and I believe, is what they finished at with their record. A team now just a couple of games over five hundred going in. Uh, lost to the champion Jerseyville at Pinckneyville last week and then beat Tolono Unity, of course. 
But this is a team that, you know, if it's anything like the T-Town teams of old, they're going to be tough, they're going to be physical, and they're going to be tall. Yeah, they are. And that's what I've seen is they they really get after you on the defensive end. Um, they, they pressure everything. They're very physical. Um, offensively, they have three really nice guards. Um, I'm not good with names. I just 10, 12, and 24. Um, I really like them. And they're, they're, they're tough kids. 24 is really good attacking the basket. 10 and 12 um, do a good job shooting and attacking. And then they've got, you know, 54 is a big, strong kid. Um, he, he, he really posts hard and wants the basketball in there. And then they've got a lot of nice pieces, you know, around those guys that they can do it. And they, they something that's kind of stood out to me is they go really deep. they um, they'll play a lot of different guys, and, and I don't know. I, I think Pete Town's one of those teams where you know, year it doesn't it doesn't matter a, a great deal who's running it. They they run their stuff so well that it's more of a system than personnel, and they they can bring guys in. They they all know how to play. And, and with T Town, I mean, go, go ahead. Sorry, no, my fault. No, I just—I mean, they—they they just they they pose some problems because of their their overall size and and then their depth. Well, and this T Town having left the National Trail Conference Independent now, able to play in a, a couple more shootouts and and without any conference games, that leaves them a wide variety of opponents they can play. Has there been any talk of trying to make this a regular matchup on both teams' schedules? You know what? A, a little bit. Um, we play them. We have played them in the summer as long as I can remember. Before, when, when Doug was coaching, we'd always play them in the summer. And um, you know, last summer when we played them, you know, obviously we knew that this game was coming up this year. I um, mean, and, and Coach Farmark, he talked a lot about it, that he would like to add us to their schedule. He said, you know, they're trying to play a lot of different um, bigger schools. So I think. I think what they, I think the reason for leaving the national trail was that they wanted to to really beef up their schedule, and you know, like they they knew most years in the national trail they could probably get. I mean, Key Town could schedule twenty nine wins every year pretty much if they wanted to, with how good they are. But I think they wanted to beef up their schedule, make sure they're more prepared for for regional postseason play. And, um, I, I think that that they would be open to that. I think that we would. I mean, it's a good game. It's a good game for us. I know, you know, I think sometimes you can put too much into how big the school is. I mean, when, when it's a good program, it's a good program. It doesn't matter if they have, you know, 300 kids in their school or 3,000 kids in their school. If, it, if they got good players and they're a good program, it's a game we need to play. Of course, you have Carbondale coming up on Friday night, the 11th at home. Uh, back to the conference after the first game was since a loss at Marion at on December the 21st, so kind of a break there in terms of conference play. But the Terriers come to town, and briefly in talking about the Terriers, this is a Cardinal team that you're going to get a tough tough battle regardless of what their record is when they come in. I believe they're 9-5 and five right now. But just a tough Terrier team that's been playing everybody real close. Yeah, they have. I mean, they're, they could... They're one and three in the league, is that right? And they could easily be four and four and zero oh in the league. And they had a great chance to beat Cahokia. They led Centralia pretty much the entire game until the end, and they played. They they led Altoff pretty much the entire game until the end. So um, they've been right there, and I've gotten to see them on film a couple times. I'm going to get to see them uh, Tuesday. They play Highland. I'm going to get to see them play in person against them. Um, the Payne kid. Um, who we remember last year as a freshman, man, he's been putting up some big numbers. I think he scored 30 points three different games this year. He's um, he's scoring a ton, and they they have nice pieces. You know, last year, um, last year they played a lot of freshmen, sophomores. Their best sophomore last year was hurt more than half of the year. Um, so I think you know, last year their record was was not truly indicative of what they were because of how young and because of the injuries and. They, they're they're a little bit like Altman that they don't really have a true post kid. They they can you know, pretty much put five guards out there and 
it can really spread you out and attack you. And, and then obviously on the defensive end, they put a lot of pressure on you. And that's, that's something that we're going to see um, the next couple games. We're going to see a, a lot of pressure, a lot of trap defense because P-Town does that and then Carpendale does it as well. So um, we're going we're to get a, a big dose of that. And we've, had, we've gotten a big dose of that. I mean, that's what Alton did. That's what Oakland did. And we've seen that a lot lately. Speaking of seeing a lot lately is our WMAX Sports Social Media Question of the Week, and this week's question is, have you broken any of your New Year's resolutions yet? Um, I, no. I said I'm going to start uh, watching what I eat, but I'm not starting until we go back to school on Monday. So I'm sure that won't last once it starts, but I haven't had a chance to break it yet. <laughs> That's solid logic, though, because, I mean, you you have ample, well, I shouldn't say ample free time, but you're not at school to kind of keep you grounded a little bit. I can relate to that. That's that's good thinking. Yeah, I, I there's no way I could, there's no way this week I could watch <laughs> what I was eating with all the, all the ample opportunity to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Scotty, we will see you this afternoon at St. Anthony. Good luck to the Rams today against T-Town. We look forward to talking to you again on our postgame show. All right, sounds great. See you guys then. Scott Gamber, Mount Vernon Rams. They are eight and five. Mm-hmm. Eight and five on the air. They'll take on T Town today in the St. Anthony shootout. It'll be four o'clock tip off. Of course, if everything runs on schedule, which means we're on the air at about three forty-five. You can find video online at wmixsports.com or the live broadcast at wmixfm ninety-four point one. That's this afternoon. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Lady Rams head coach Jeff Lana. We'll talk about the Lady Rams who are eleven and three on the year, missing some key players though. We'll talk with Jeff Lawn after the break. This is a Saturday Sports Show presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Back after these. People's National Bank has served the communities of Southern Illinois since 1909. People's National Bank's strong roots extend deep in the communities we serve through the local schools, chambers, summer youth programs, charities, businesses, and much more. Whether you are a teacher, farmer, business owner, plant manager, or janitor, People's National Bank has the financial strength and knowledge along with high-quality products and services to help you with your financial needs. People's National Bank, serving Southern Illinois since 1909. Member FDIC. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency... Call 911. And we welcome you back to Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Jeff Lonnan, Mount Vernon Lady Rams, joins us now, courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Lonnan, good morning. Oh, Christopher, how you doing? You know, I'm doing pretty good. I, I, I don't know how you're doing. I assume that you're okay. Of course, the Lady Rams are 11-3 and three on the year. That's a good record to start 2013. Sorry, you go. My alarm went off on my cell phone. That was See, that's scary. the bad thing about iPhones is that <laughs> even though you're on the phone, the notification sounds still go off in your ear, you although at yeah. a lower volume. Anyhow, Lady Rams are 11-3. and three. I think that's a pretty good record to start 2013. Yeah, I mean, if you told us we'd be 11, 11 and 3 at the beginning of the year, we, we would have taken that, obviously. Um, we've had a couple of rough ones here lately, but, you know, we really stepped up in competition. I mean, you know, we went to that Mascuta tournament, and any time you go there, you're, you know, unless you're really, really loaded, you're probably going to take a couple losses, and that's kind of what happened. I, I just think that, you know, overall, we, we've taken care of all the games that we were supposed to win, and, and, you know, the ones that we got beat in, we were probably not the favorite anyway. So I think we've done a really good job at, you know, not playing down to competition and taking care of business in the games that we were capable of winning. And, and, and then the ones we did in the two or three, I mean, gosh, you know, there's no, I mean, we lost to Nashville and we lost to Belleville West and we lost to Altoff in a narrow game. So three really, really super, super good teams. And, you know, everybody else we took care of, and I'm pretty proud of that. So 
we've got to figure out a way now in the second half to continue to get better and, and um, you know, continue to create ways to, uh, to score. Um, you know, that's become a little bit of an issue for us lately since, you know, we lost Haley. And that's, you know, that's 16 or 17 points out of our lineup. So, I mean, that's probably our biggest challenge going into the second half of the season is uh, chap- offensively finding better ways to score. A challenge coming up. Triad on the road today in the afternoon. Home against Altoff at Carbondale Thursday before that Carbondale holiday tournament. That's a lot of tough competition in a compacted time of seven days. Yeah, it is. And, you know, we're not real deep. And, and you know, we're, we're, we've got to really be careful on, on our legs. And, uh, you know, we got a couple kids right now, you know, at, at start that have been nursing things, little things, you know, since the beginning of the year. So, Boy, you just got to really have a good gauge on, you know, how much gas you got in the tank when, you know, when you're coaching them. I mean, you, if we push these guys super, super, super hard and, and you know, um, it, 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 it would not be good. I mean, we, we practice. We do what we're supposed to do. I think we get the work in and we get out. And and with our depth the way it is right now, it just has to be that way. You know, we're not we're – not, um, we're out at a point right now where we can go 10 or 12 deep and throw big waves of five new kids in every, you know, three or four minutes. We're just not at that point. We just can't do that right now. And, and you know, we're, we strive to do that every year, but uh, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Right now we can't. So we got to be real careful with um, how we uh, handle our legs and um, just be very conscious of keeping them fresh here for these next, uh, next three is there a concern today because Mount Vernon schools have been out now for a couple of weeks that the the body bio rhythms may not be where they need to be to get up early, get on a bus and ride and play on an afternoon on what was still Christmas break? There's a concern every day whether we're in school or not. I mean, you just there's just nobody on our schedule we can we can approach as as being a gimme win, and I know Tri has not won. Uh, they really struggled this year, but you know I like that back to last year when we would play coin last year in the Carbondale tournament, and our kids did not did not play very well. I you know, didn't show up ready to play, so I thought you know hey they're playing a small. And I think in their mind they were playing a smaller school, and and they didn't know much about them. And, and as coaches, we probably didn't emphasize that enough to them. And uh, they went over there and they got their butts beat. Coin played tremendous basketball that day, and. You know, this is kind of a situation we go into now. I think we refer back to situations like that now when we go play a game like we we, uh, we play today. So, you know, I'm always concerned. You know, I'm also concerned about the fact that, you know, in the last five or six games, we haven't been able to get out of the 30s on offense. You know, and, and you know, that's a huge concern for me. Um, so, you know, we've worked really hard this week, I think, more offensively than defensively. We shot the ball out. We've we probably spent the first 45 minutes of practice every day just shooting because we're just not making a lot of shots right now. And um, so we worked on that. And, you know, so, yeah, your question is about, I mean, you know, we're always concerned, especially when there's no school. And, and But we have practiced. You know, we have stayed together as a team. We did give them a couple days off there. But, you know, they don't seem any different in practice than they were before. So we're just going to find out, I guess. Of course, Lonnie, you, you have Altoff coming in on Monday night to Shagnon Gymnasium after after facing them in the final game at Mascuda. Do you like having to play a team so closely back-to-back coming out of a tournament in a conference game? Yeah, I think it's easier because you don't forget as much. You know, I think it's going to be fresh on the kids' minds what, what Altoff did and what they did, and it's pressure on our minds as coaches. You know, I think if you play somebody... And got you know win or lose on a, on a, let's say a Monday, and you had to turn around and play and let's say on a Wednesday as opposed to a month down the road. I think you want to play them on that Wednesday with a day's rest because everything's so much more fresh in your mind. You know what you did wrong and and you remember certain things they do. If if time elapses on an opponent, you tend to kind of you tend to kind of forget because you play so many games in this sport and you know you kind of lose track of who was good, who was bad, what they do. And all that, but this game is obviously very fresh. So, there was only one game between with this triad game today. We're right back at them on Monday night, so it was easier in practice to just kind of, you know, skim over 
the only thing that we have to do different to have a chance to win on Monday. Speaking of venture, we go to the WMAX Sports Social Media Question of the Week, and it is, have you broken any of your New Year's resolutions? Oh, well, you know, every year my, my New Year's resolution is always to lose weight. And, and you know, every year I fail, and I think I've probably already failed because I think I've probably gained about two pounds since I made the resolution. What was that, three days ago? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's just not... It's just not a good resolution. I just need to quit making it because I'm always just going to be what I am. You know, I'm going to be about 215, 220. You know, like you, Hugo, like, you know, you, your weight fluctuates, but you always know where you're going to end up at the end of the year, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Mine just you keeps know. going up, though. I've gained a significant <laughs> amount of weight loss, and I don't think people necessarily understand that. I, I understand. Hugo, you're the only guy that tells me he weighs like, 275 or 280, he's oh, yeah. a, large, a large T-shirt. Extra large. I've, Extra large, I have Mon and I have Milt Thompson-like thighs. I am evenly distributed. You are a 2X all the way. There's no way you're an XL, but you continue to tell me that. And I'm not I'm buying an extra large T-shirt, t-shirt right, right now, like Lana, and it's baggy. Huh? It's coming. It comes down to my, my, my pelvis and beyond. I mean, there's no... There's no doubt about it. I mean, it is what it is. It sounds pretty sensitive right now, Coach, is what this turned into. <laughs> well, here's the problem. I am six three and a half, six four, and I only have like a 32-inch inseam. So, like, I have no legs about me whatsoever. I am all right. trunk, man. So I actually need like an extra large tall. Right. You were not born to be a high jumper. No, I was not. I was not born to be much of an athlete in anything whatsoever. But that's, that's pretty well here nor there. No, but... You do what you do what you do well, and you're you're a vital part of it. So we appreciate that. Well, thank you. I'm not sure what I do well, but I appreciate those kind words nonetheless. First of all, anytime it's eating related, you might as well wait to start that resolution until after the Super Bowl. That's very true. Yeah, we can't. We got to have some stuffed peppers for sure, and all that good though. The, the roast and uh, all those good uh, weenies and meatballs and all that. So it's not a good day to diet. And, and I think you're right, Hugo. I think the resolution on weight losing weight needs to come after. I think from that point on, it could be a little easier to lose weight. You bet it does. Lana, and of course, we will see you Monday night as the Lady Rams take on Altoff at home. We'll be there, Chris. Thanks a lot. You betcha. That's Jeff Lana, head coach of the Lady Rams. <laughs> that conversation that, went nowhere. Yeah, it did, in a hurry. Mm-hmm. It's like the 15th time in sports or history that his doubt with regard to my T-shirt. Not, it's not, no longer the day where I'm forcing myself into mediums like at the Hoop Center. I mean, this is this is legit now. But anyhow. Uh, 40 minutes past the 8 o'clock hour. Wayne Hari, Alan Englehart still to come this 9 o'clock hour here on the Saturday Sports. We'll take a break. Come back. Presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. The midway point of the basketball season is here, but WMIX and Community First Bank still have plenty of showcase games over the coming weeks. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, president of Community First Bank. Woodlawn, Waltonville, Weber, Wayne City, and Cesar Valier, Waltonville all look to make strong pushes towards the postseason on the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. Log on to WMIXSports.com to find the schedule and listen to the game, or stay tuned to WMIX for high school basketball. Powered by Community First Bank, welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC. You've heard a lot about the new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center, about the cozy fireplaces in its patient areas, and about its numerous healing gardens and soothing nature-inspired artwork. Now that the new hospital is finished, you can finally see them for yourself. Good Samaritan is hosting tours of the new hospital on Saturday, January 5th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sunday, January 6th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. This isn't your ordinary open house. It's the opportunity to get a behind-the-scenes glimpse of the brand-new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center before it's open to the public in late January. Come see an operating room from the point of view of the surgeon or the new expanded ER and all private patient rooms. Join us at the new facility just off Veterans Memorial Drive in Mount Vernon on January 5th and 6th for complimentary refreshments and to see how we're raising the bar for health care in Southern Illinois. You've never seen a hospital like this before. Visit smgsi.com to learn more.
Learn to live healthy, learn to live well, and learn how you can live free from unexpected medical expense with a major medical expense policy from Pekin Insurance and the Page Agency. Health insurance that covers hospital, medical, and surgical expenses offers a wide choice of deductibles and a non-tobacco user discount, too. Rising medical costs don't have to be a problem with a major medical expense policy from Pekin Insurance. This is coverage we hope you'll never need, but you just can't be without. Call the Page Agency at 242-7000 about a major medical health insurance plan today. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital, it's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Whoa, hello there. Speaking of hello, Wayne Hari, coach of the Nashville Hornets, joins us now on the Saturday Sports Show. Coach, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Has to be a good morning. You guys are coming off a nice run there at the Mascouda Holiday Tournament. Champion, still undefeated on the season. And now you're off to a shootout today where you play Far- uh, Farmington. Is that Farmington, Illinois, or Farmington, Missouri? Uh, it's it's Farmington, Missouri, and it's nice. just, it's just a, a regular scheduled game. I, um, we had uh, we had some problems trying to uh, get a game scheduled for uh, for last year and this year, and uh, they were open, and uh, they're they're a pretty large school, and uh, I think they're you know from what I understand, they're uh, they very talented. They're a team like a Breeze Central, Breeze Modern Day, uh, uh, and we watched them play a couple times, and uh, it'll be a good uh, road test for us. And, We'll see how we'll see what happens today. I, I got to give you a hard time. You got to make sure which team you're going to play, right? Farmington, Missouri, Farmington, <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> yeah, we sure don't want to get going in the wrong direction. I think we'd be in trouble. <laughs> no, and again, I tell you, well, I had to give you a hard time about that. And you, again, you're running through some things. You're getting some conference wins. Again, another one on Thursday or against Ducoin. But again, like we're talking to all the coaches, a very quick turnaround. You guys will have, besides the Ducoin game and the game today, two more, and then the Highland Tournament. Kind of a condensed schedule this year as far as all the tournaments go during the season, isn't it? Yeah, you know, with the IHSA, with the way the uh, weeks ended up this year, it's, it's, it's a week shorter almost. And uh, there's just not a whole lot of time to, uh, uh, what I'm saying, trying to put new things in and, do, and try to get better, you know. And uh, it seems like you're always preparing for the next team. And so that makes it, it makes it pretty tough. And, and uh, one thing you have, I think you have to be careful about is, is maybe making sure that uh, your team's fresh. I know, uh, you know, I, we cut our practices down a little bit, and just making sure that we're that we keep our legs fresh. Just because, just because one thing is our depth situation. I think everybody understands that. Plus, I think it keeps the kids fresh. I know we we still have a lot to to, to work on, and we still do that. But we try to do it in in more condensed form, and it seems like it's it's, it's helped us through the years. At this time of year, going into January, the dog days of the schedule, is it that much harder as a coach and a coaching staff to come up with new ways to keep the kids interested and keep practices upbeat? Yeah, that's a good point. I, you know, what I, I what we try to do here in the past is just trying to find new drills and things like that to do. And, you know, we kind of put them in early in the year, and that way that we can jump into the new drill like, like now so we don't have to spend a whole lot of time teaching it. And it seems like it keeps it fresh. It keeps things you know, more upbeat and, and things like that. And, uh, you know, we try to, you know, making sure the kids are having a good time out there and things like that. So those are the small things that we try to do. And, and then, you know, when, when game time comes, we try to get try to get busy. Trying to get busy, and you will. And then uh, you will roll through the Highland Tournament, and, of course, you pick back up. And you have a big shootout on Thursday, January 31st at the Scott Trade Center. Coaches Against Cancer, who are you playing there, and how did that shootout come back about? Well, uh, we're playing. First of all, we're playing Quincy Notre Dame, which oh. uh, so it really wasn't that wasn't uh, part of the situation when we signed up for it. But uh, the team that we were supposed to play dropped out, and uh, the, the director of the uh, shootout uh, said Quincy. They they called me and they said uh, they found a team, and they said, "Well, I asked them who it was, and they said Quincy Notre Dame." I said, "Oh, well, thanks." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You know, you're talking about, you're talking about a team that's 50th in the country, and three Division One players, and it might be the uh, either the first or second best team in the state of Illinois, you know, uh, all four classes. So, uh, yeah, we got our hands full. Uh, how it came about was um, uh, the director calls, you know, you know, we've had we've had some success here, and they, they kind of wanted us to come over there, and I told them, you know, usually when you get in those shootouts, they're looking for a marquee player, and we, you know, here at Nashville, we've really never had that, and... Uh, and I tried to explain it to him. He said, that's okay. He said, we still, 
interested you interested in coming over and I said that's fine you know I think it'd be good for the girls you know have some some to look forward to and and I think you know since we don't have that marquee player I think this is just a uh, award for all the years past all the girls have played and you know the success that we've had I think I think all the girls should are, are going to share in this and all through the years that we've had here at Nashville and building the program up and it's not just this year's team which this year's team you know is going to enjoy it there's no question about that and, and they deserve it and and things like that but it's all it's the teams from the past because like I said before we just we haven't had the marquee players here but they've all played and we've done well so I think it's just an award for uh, 13 years of having some pretty good basketball over here of course one thing I look at and going back to Miss Scooter briefly is your first round pairings against the JV team obviously the Centralianis JV is there a little bit more pressure when you have to play a JV team in a varsity tournament like that knowing that it's a team you're obviously supposed to beat but you know harder to prepare for a JV team probably and that there's usually not very much film on a JV is, is there a little bit more pressure there yeah I, you know it's a good question because people would ask me about it and what I what I thought about it it's just a situation that came up and like I said it just we have, you know, we got to, we'll have to, we just got to play it. It's a tough situation on both ends. Um, you know, it's a tough situation for Coach Stig and, and that JV team. And, uh, you know, he kind of, you know, he kind of requested that he play us, you know, because we kind of know each other pretty good. And, you know, the situation that, that the JV team is in trying to play in a varsity tournament. And it's a tough deal just because, you know, sometimes they're going to get overmatched and, and you don't want to, you know, make it tough on the, on the Mount Vernon kids either, and and things like that, or the Centralia kids either, and and uh, so it, it was a tough deal, and uh, I thought it, 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 we handled it pretty good on both ends, and uh, we came out. Roger said, you know, hey, appreciate everything that we did and things like that. So, yeah, it's a tough. Like I said, it's a tough deal. You know, no situation. I wish they had a, you know, like we have in Nashville, the running clock. I think that really helps both sides. You know, and helps. Coaches on both on both benches, you know, you know when you have the thirty point situation where the clock runs, and I think and that's you know saves on injuries and everything like that. Our WMI Sports social media question of the week we ask you is: Have you broken any New Year's resolutions yet? Well, I think one one of my problems is I don't I don't put a I don't put a out there because that way I don't have anything to break. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm mentally tough enough to, to stay with it. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> That's solid logic. That's something I should try. Mine, and mine were broken because I never even really established any. But, uh. Coach, obviously we wish the best of luck to the Hornets along the way, especially against Farmington today. And then as you head into the Highland Tournament, good luck to Nashville. Hey, thanks, guys. Always a pleasure talking to you. Always a pleasure. That's, that's Wayne Hari, head coach of the undefeated Nashville Hornets, of course. Uh, looking at their schedule, you, you might have seen it. They were supposed to play DuCoin, but DuCoin's listed on their schedule four times. Um Looks like they were supposed to play Thursday, but it looks like that game's actually going to be later on this season. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Of course, I thought maybe they had played this week, but I know they played earlier in the season. But yeah, Ducoin, Nashville beat them, them four times. back when early, and then they'll play again. That's a glitch. But hey, they'll play them twice because they're in the same division of the River to River. Yeah. Well, maybe they're feeling frisky and froggy trying to play four times. Who knows? Right. Saturday Sports Show, of course, is presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. Don't forget, there is still time to sign up. For the 2013 Lose to Win, sponsored by Crossroads Community Hospital, the YMCA, and Rim Lake College, it's just $25 per person. That's over to get over $1,000 in value. Not a bad deal. Call Debbie at 241-8510. That's 241-8510 for more information. Or stop by the YMCA to register. That is the 2013 Lose to Win. I could afford to do something like that. Win some big bucks by percentage. That said, we need to go to break. We'll have Alan Englehart of the Pinckneyville Lady Panthers next. With two new hospitals, trusted physicians, and dedicated staff, it's clear that our local healthcare industry is helping to make our community stronger every day. Hi, I'm Terry Prosize, a commercial lender and healthcare banking specialist at Community First Bank. I'm putting over 20 years of healthcare and business experience to work for our medical community and local businesses. Whether you have an expanding physician practice, an existing business, or hoping to start a new business, I have the financial prescription for you. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ida. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to 
working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX. WMIXSports.com. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Don't forget about lose to win. Great contest. It's over a $1,000 value that you get for $25. Call Debbie Richardson at 241-8510. That's 241-8510. Or stop into the YMCA to register. The 2013 Lose to Win, sponsored by Crossroads Community Hospital, the YMCA, and Rin Lake College. Not a bad deal. I've seen people very successful. I was there for the check presentation one time or something like that at the mall in March, I believe it was. Pretty cool deal. That said, we're trying to catch up with Pinckneyville Lady Panthers head coach Alan Englehart, also their baseball coach. So he yep. is not an unfamiliar voice to the Saturday sports. So we'll be glad to catch up with him in just a moment. Their shoot around actually started a couple of minutes ago. He was going to squeeze in some time for us just because that's what coaches do. They're very courteous mm-hmm. this time of year and season. And we appreciate all of the coaches who make their appearances here on the Saturday sports show. And many may not understand that they have very busy schedules and they have shoot arounds and practices, and oftentimes they are talking to us in the middle of such. Right, and that's one of those deals. The Lady Panthers have a game today, I believe, with Carlisle, if I can remember right. They do have a game. They have a shoot around this morning. So, you know, they're busy like everybody else. It's one of those deals that everybody's busy out doing things, and coaches are doing these things, and the coaches have some time to share with us, and we work with their schedules. And, we're, you know, the coaches aren't here for us. We're here for the coaches, and we work around their schedules more times than not. And that's the case here in this case is, you know, he's obviously in practice. It's an ego-free Saturday sports show. We Actually, understand. it's Vandalia today. Lady Panthers at Vandalia today. Who'd you say? I said Carlisle, but that couldn't have been right because they just played them. Or going to or something, but anyway. It's close. Yeah. Bond, Clinton, Fayette are all kind of right, right there. Right. Vandalia at Vandalia Especially today. getting the panhandles of, the, of Fayette. Ooh, right. That's a weirdly shaped county. It is. Of course, Edwards County capital. used to be the biggest county in Illinois until all these counties started swiping land away from it. Do you know that? Right. Yep. Well, we you used to be that. part of Virginia, guy. too, but, you know, hey, <laughs> There's that. <laughs> there's that back in the day, too, as they say. Oh, man. There's your little history for the day on the Saturday Sports. And don't forget, we had the WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week, which is, have yeah. you already broken your New Year's resolution? I will go on record, D.C., as saying I was not dumb enough to start mine before the 7th. And I may wait till after the Super Bowl, which will then lead until after Easter, which will then lead until after the 4th of July, which By will lead point. until after Thanksgiving. At that point, I just continue to get fatter. Yep. Is what it is. Lady Panthers and Pinkneyville, boys and girls, playing at Vandalia today, by the way. It's a doubleheader of action. Nice. See, more. Sc- I'm a kind That's of That's a Kentucky trend, of is what I that rant. is. I can rant. Every school needs to do something like that, at least once in a while, maybe you know, every other, every other week or so. There we go. Or whenever they can. One thirty JV girls, 3 p.m. varsity girls, then boys JV, boys varsity. What's my pick up the red phone? The red phone's been dialed out of Perry County. <laughs> the red phone is on, as they say. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that's a Columbia Blue phone. Columbia Blue phone <laughs> is what it should be, yes. Oh, man, but they just wrapped up a good holiday tournament down there, the Duster Thomas Hoops Classic on the boys' side. The girls, however, winners of that Heron tournament. We talked briefly about that on the 22nd when we when we did our holiday tourney preview show. And, you know, that's a good tournament for teams like Pinckneyville and Vianna and Heron. That's great competition for those teams. And, you know, in Class 2A, though, Heron's going to be 3A hosting a 3A regional this year. That's, you know, Murphy Sparrow's in there as well. That's that's a good 2A tournament. Quality tournament for a team like the Pinckneyville Lady Panthers that could help propel them onto some postseason success I, I'd have to go back and look see which regional they're in of course that's all dependent on where they feed I think they feed south don't they yeah and it and Alan Engelhart has done such a good job in a couple different ways there obviously the baseball program well, yeah done a very good job there it's you know got them to state a couple of times and then of course you look at what they've been able to do on the basketball side. He's done a fantastic job. Of course, everybody hears about the Panther side of things in basketball, but everybody doesn't hear about what Alan Engelhart does. And, of course, you know, as far as where he goes and what he does that basketball program, and he's turned that thing around. It used to be kind of an easy win. Of course, everybody's in the shadow of Nashville on that side, but now that that program is doing very well. Pinckneyville will be in the Trico Regional this year with Chester, Dupo, Redbud, and Sparta. Ooh. So a regional there that possibly 
and should probably be a Pinckneyville regional win, which would advance them to that Dupo sectional. Have fun with that. Of course, the Dupo and Newton sectionals are your closest ones in Class 2A girls down here. Well, and, you know, you mentioned Pinckneyville, and you have the Wayne Hari era at Nashville, and you mentioned kind of overshadowing the rest of the division. You had the Cassie Drew years at AJ even further kind of overshadowing everything, and I don't think people understand that well, the Pinckneyville Lady Panthers are a solid program. Got to remember that Sparta had a run in there, too. Yeah. Where they were very good at a over there at Sparta. Especially. Yeah. They were solid. That, they're not what they are now. They're going through a cycle, but Sparta girls were known for volleyball and basketball just as much as anything else. Had great runs in basketball with Nashville Sparta going at it. Um, you look at Pinckneyville jumping into the mix now, and Carterville with, you know, jumping in, they're going to get their foot in the door maybe. So it's a very competitive river-to-river river as it has been over the years and, you know, one of those deals where all those teams have had their run, but right now Nashville's on top looking at everybody. Well, and and rightfully so. I mean, Nashville has just beefed up their schedule so much, you know, over the past few years, you know, playing against a team out of Farmington, Missouri today. And, you know, Quincy Notre Dame in a shootout, and obviously Wayner just said that's not who they anticipated playing. That wasn't who they were originally scheduled to play. But, you know, a lot of history as of recent with QND and, of course, in some trophy games at State and, and a lot of recent success there for them. But, you know, the river-to-river river Mississippi, and I know some of the bottom struggling somewhat this year, but when you take a look at that Mississippi division, the top tier is really a top tier in terms of two-way basketball. Oh, I'm sure the QND has all their kids right there in their backyard but you know pinckneyville will begin play after today they have vandalia and then they're at carterville on the 8th and they will play in what has been a traditional midwinter tournament at west frankfurt for girls play a three-night deal 12 15 17th then you look at the rest of their schedule anna jonesboro they got a fairly favored schedule four out of five at home after the midwinter of course, they've been on the road. They haven't played a home game since December 18th against DuCoin. But then they have four of their last five regular season games at home with the likes of AJ and, Na- and Nashville with Bree Central, Central baby. DuCoin, and Sparta. So some winnable games, a couple of toughies sandwiched in there, but a of some very winnable games, but very tough as that regional start February 4th and for Class 1A and 2A girls. Well, and certainly no easy stretch for the Pinckneyville Lady Panthers. I uh, wish we could have caught up with Catch. wish we could have caught up caught. with Coach Ingle are today, but uh, we'll try to catch up with him uh, in in the coming weeks here on the Saturday Sports Show. Probably, if I had to fancy a guess, probably looking at maybe the 19th or so. Midwinter tournament preview coming up Mm -hmm. next week. Can't wait to talk about that. Salem, of course, Highland, West Frankfurt girls, West Frankfurt boys, the BIT, uh, the BIT tournament, of course, uh, the Midland Trail Conference tournament, all going to get some love here next week, and many more, of course, here on the Saturday Sports Show. We're coming up to the top of the hour. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll have a score report for you from the WMIXSports.com scoreboard. All up ahead here as we head to hour number two on the Saturday Sports Show, presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Don't forget, lose to win 2013 coming right at you. Still time to register. Just 25 bucks is a great value and also a great way to get in some better shape. Call Debbie at 241-8510. That's 241-8510 for more information. Or stop by the YMCA to register. We're back after these. The state of denial is a drag and a trial. When I bought my cheap insurance, should have known this day would come. Now I've had an accident and I'm feeling quite alone. Called them at least 20 times, but they won't pick up the phone. Without personal service, my policy's kind of worthless. Get to a better state, State Farm. Don't deny yourself to call an agent. Tony Wolf in Mount Vernon, 242-1421. The Saturday Sports Show lives here. AM 940 WMIX Mount Vernon. A free service from Withers Broadcasting. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois welcomes Dr. Beth Conrarty to their medical staff. Dr. Conrarty specializes in comprehensive pain management using a multidisciplinary team approach by working with other specialists for optimal diagnosis and treatment of pain. Dr. Conrarty will treat most conditions of the spine, including management of cancer pain. Dr. Beth Conrarty, helping to make life better day after day at the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois in Mount Vernon. Call 618-242-3778. Do you farm or operate an agriculture-based business? Then Community First Bank is for you. Hi, I'm Steve Down, Agribusiness Lending Officer at Community First Bank. 
With our roots firmly planted in Jefferson County, we offer the stability, strength, and personal attention that you deserve. Community First Bank wants to be your financial partner with customized products for both your personal and farm banking needs. Stop by any of our five convenient Jefferson County locations to see how we can help your business grow. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Taking a walk in the second hour of the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us for hour number two. Whew. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. We sound so frumpy. But it's a beautiful Saturday morning out there. It's a little chilly when I woke up. Frost covering the windshield, of course, which was a pain in the, the rear end. On the bright side, the WMIX Sports Mobile Studios are going to travel in a little bit later today. The, the snow has finally cleared off of them. I did that last night for you guys, of course, as we head to St. Anthony today for Rams basketball. The shootout against T-Town coming your way, 3.45 p.m. pregame, 4 o'clock will be your tip. WMIX FM with video on WMIXSports.com. Speaking of WMIXSports.com, big scoreboard up there from last night. We'll take a look at those scores now. A game you heard right on WMIX-FM last night at WMIXSports.com. Waltonville beat Weber at home 45-35. Midland Trail scores Woodlawn over Sandoval 86-34. North Clay beat Wayne City 50-32. There was one South 7 game last night. Kokia beat Altoff 61-44. BDC, Christopher over ZR 59-36. Goreville over Trico 73-68. Eldorado will be Carmi, 71-67. J.C. Get, beats Vianna at home, 70-43. Three road teams won in the Ohio division last night, the River to River. Murphy, Massac, Harrisburg. Murphy beat Heron, 38-36. Massac over Bitten, 66-46. Harrisburg beat Frankfurt, 76-46. Pinckneyville wins the Battle of Perry County, 65-38. Sparta beat Carterville, 62-51. Nashville or A.J., 53-37. Little Illini, Robinson over Pal Hutt, 82-30. Casey beat Newton, 74-67. Florenceville got Lawrenceville. Flora got Lawrenceville, 66-55. Red Hill over Cumberland, 48-39. Only over Edwards County, 69-45. And Marshall beat Oblong, 55-36. The Apollo, Mount Zion beat Salem 63-50, Effingham beat Paris 57-39, and Charleston beat Mattoon 49-46. If you need more or want to look at them all, go to WMIXSports.com. They're listed by conference, affiliation, and or non-conference games. That way it's a little easier to read for you at WMIXSports.com. All about organization. What's that website? What's that address again? WMIXSports.com. Here's my address. (laughs) There you go. Find us online. You're finding now the head coach of the Woodlawn Cardinals three times. Wait, how, how would you say that? They're now that they're now that yeah, there you go. Three Pete at Cesar Valier Holiday Tournament. It's copyrighted Shane. by Pat Riley. So yes, it is. He yeah. coined out in reference to either the Bulls or Duke. I don't know which one. You're wrong on both. <laughs> Just trying to upset you. Just okay. trying to get under your crawl a little bit. Anyhow, Shane Witzel, the Woodlawn Cardinals joins us now. Coach Witzel, good morning. Good morning, Chris. You know what? A great morning indeed. Celebrating, of course, back to back to back tournament titles at Cesar Valier. It's your your it's a fifth straight for the county. Of course, you guys had won a year prior to Waltonville, now three in a row, and certainly something we're celebrating there on the western side of the county. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's a difficult tournament, and you have to play well. And, you, and when you're on the right side of that bracket, you're going to get uh, three good games in a row, and, and that's what we got in, in New Athens and Sparta and Goreville and. And uh, it was it was tough, and and it was uh, uh, definitely good games all the way through. And we had stretches where we played pretty well, but they were all physical, hard fought battles. You learned a lot from your team over those few days with the delay, and then coming back and winning it on Monday. A couple days off from the schedule at least, and then you come back with Sandoval last night, a, a regional championship matchup in at last year. Was there any kind of letdown at the beginning for your team to get back into the groove after such a big win over Goreville? I don't think so. I mean, obviously, you're a little concerned about that, and and uh, you know, we we took a day off, and then we had a couple of days of practice. Normally, we take about three days off in there before you start really getting into the second half of your season. But I, I really felt like our intensity was pretty good. We guarded pretty well, and and uh, overall, I mean, we we did some things incorrectly, but that's that's kind of part of it. But we were aggressive, and, and we got after it on the defensive end. 
We've been talking to other coaches this morning about the compact schedule this year with holiday tournament for you ended this week. You get a week of games. You get basically four games in. And then the conference tournament, is that kind of a deal where you as a coach and your staff have to watch how much leg time your kids are using on the practice force and not tire them out? Uh, a little bit. I mean, I don't worry so much about that here in the start. It's when you get after your midwinter tournament. There's a stretch in there of about two or three weeks before the regional where you always see a couple of wow scores, and and uh, normally that's that's due to fatigue. But at the same time, you you know you can't go too easy, so you got to continue to try to get better. So that's a delicate balance. And and in, in our situation, we're we're a little bit deeper bench wise, so um, I feel like as the season progresses, that hopefully we won't see that. But at the same time, we're going to keep pushing to get better. And, and uh, so we can avoid a little bit of that situation. Of course, like everybody else, you guys have the quick turnaround from the holiday tournament to now the Midland Trail Conference tournament coming up. You guys will pre- presumably play on a Tuesday night, the 15th, after getting a, a first round bye. But, you know, is, is it kind of unusual to have such a quick turnaround going from your final game of the holiday tournament to your first game of, of midwinter play? Um, not really. I mean, it's it's... You know, the, the calendar is pretty much established with the weather pushing us back from, from Saturday to Monday. There's a couple days in there that that uh, that delayed that. But it's 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 a set schedule, and and it, it's normally this kind of like three-week period. And, and the good thing for us between now and then is we, we've got a, a good Hamilton County team tonight, and we got to go on the road and play at North Clay, and, and uh, then we go on the road and play Aaron. So we got three big games coming up uh, before we ever get to that conference tournament. So um, we feel like that's a chance for us to play some good quality competition going into that conference tournament. Well, went down the line, speaking of Heron, it was a game you started last year, a little series. You also pick up Carmi and Flora on the schedule this year, a couple of 2A teams. How will that help you as far as new teams and new environments for your team to play in before postseason arrives? Well, yeah, they're they're traditionally good programs that do things correctly, and and uh, they have players with some physical size and strength, and and even though Carmi's a little down compared to what they normally are, they're still Carmi, and and uh, that'll be a tough battle. It'd be on the road, and and you don't have the adversity of dealing with that part of it. Uh, and of course, with Flora, they they've got off to a really good start. I know they lost a couple games at Vandalia, but. Um, they they have a good basketball team. I think some people thought they'd be down with what they lost, but traditionally they're always competitive, and and uh, that was a big pickup for us to get those two games and in, in a home and away series. So we're excited about playing both of those programs. I, I got to ask this: Was there any NBA knowledge brought back from Oklahoma City to help you out at all? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I think we got sold out for Durant and the Thunder, but. Um, no, I don't think you can translate the NBA game too much to <laughs> some of the things that we actually do. Well, I, I figured since that road trip was much publicized, you know, that uh, they would at least brought something back for you to use instead of just hearing about all this Oklahoma City Thunder stuff that we, that banters around with Jefferson County on the west side. Yeah, I think they were most excited to be able to get to listen to our game. Maybe, maybe that's what I wanted to hear whenever they were telling me that, that they got to listen to the whole thing. But, you know, they had a good time, and, and uh, that's, the life of a basketball coach, you know, I, I would love to have been there and see the game, but my responsibility was here, and and I thoroughly enjoyed our championship game, and I think our kids benefited from that kind of environment and that kind of situation and that kind of game. Hey, speaking of environment situations, we always ask our WMI Sports social media question of the week, or here now. The question this week is, have you broken any New Year's resolutions yet? I didn't even make any this year. <laughs> Um, I knew better than to do that. So, no, my answer would be no, I, I haven't broken any. Well, that's good. So you're off to a perfect start then. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> Low expectations. <laughs> oh, man. Coach, good luck to the Woodlawn Cardinals, of course, tonight. I know we have a couple more games going up into the Midland Trail Conference Tournament. We look forward to talking to you again soon. All right. Thanks for having me on. That's Shane Winslow, head coach of the Woodlawn Cardinals. And <laughs> I, I love the answer of did not make any to break. Because you cannot be disappointed that way, and that's probably the best way to look at it. And of course, uh, the Cardinals on a roll, and and I know you kind of take a look at the, you know. Here's the thing: they come in the season number one, 
in, in the AP poll in Class 1A, but you had the two tough games out of the gate with Oakville and Modern Day, and you know it's the same thing that happened last year. Two losses going into the Cesar Holiday Tournament. They were the one or two seed last year. I don't remember. Probably the one. Cause to be the man, you have to beat the man, Ric Flair. But they come in this year, the number one seed in the Cesar Flair Holiday Tournament. They win that again and, you know, kind of getting a, a big steam of momentum. And you, obviously you don't want to make any early projections to postseason success for one team because we don't know what will happen in the postseason. But they're putting that recipe together again and probably playing – Good, starting to play good basketball at the right time so they can play better basketball down the stretch. If they stay within themselves and everybody does the job they were supposed to do, as we saw on Monday, this team has dangerous potential. They're eight, nine deep. They can run you. They can walk it up. They can battle you. They can defend you. The main thing is defense. As long as they play defense and do what they're supposed to, it's going to be tough for teams to get points. I mean, they're not a very tall team, but they're a long team. And they get after it. They have a lot of deflections. And if they play like they did Monday, they stay within themselves. They do what needs to be done. They don't listen to everybody and love all the pats on the back and what you did last year. This team has potential to make another deep run in postseason. Is that kind of because? And, and normally we say it's it kind of comes across as sort of negative, but I mean, is it that kind of becoming the status quo of of not being satisfied? I know that's kind of contradictory and oxymoronic, but. It's it, very easy when you have the success Woodlawn has had the last three or four or five years to kind of live on your laurels and just say, hey, okay, great. If we do it, great. If not, great. And we're happy. You got the ring now, blah, blah, blah. It's another thing to still have that drive and desire to keep that bar up. I don't think – I think momentum from year to year – is not there for team to team. I think every team is its own entity, but I think as far as a program goes and as far as a winning goes and a culture goes, it kind of carries over. I don't think there's any momentum from team to team, but I think momentum and tradition and winning will help you. And as long as you stay hungry, you're fine. But the moment that you start looking at that ring and start getting your head in the clouds and your feet off the ground and the fact that you start hearing the good loves and the pats on the backs and you're great and awesome, if you stay away from that and understand the precious moment and the precious present and not worry about the past, you'll be all right. It's just when those other things start creeping into the back of your mind, that's when the issues start. Fair enough. Brian Gamber, Deirdre Dag, still to come here on the Saturday Sports Show. Our next guest, his team led him to his 450th coaching victory on both the boys' and girls' side of the coin on the other night. Of course, that we're talking about Cesar Valier, Waltonville girls basketball coach Rick Metcalf. He'll join us after the break here on the Saturday Sports Show, presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. How does Dale's Harley-Davidson in Mount Vernon stay the longest-running Harley dealer in Southern Illinois? How about free pickup and delivery and being the home of the $29.95 oil change? Plus, get financing as low as 1.5 APR, along with the best selection of certified pre-owned Harley-Davidsons. So now you know how Dale's Harley-Davidson stays number one. Dale's Harley-Davidson, open every day but Wednesday, just off of I-57 in Mount Vernon. Visit dales-hd.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. With two new hospitals, trusted physicians, and dedicated staff, it's clear that our local healthcare industry is helping to make our community stronger every day. Hi, I'm Terry Prosize, a commercial lender and healthcare banking specialist at Community First Bank. I'm putting over 20 years of healthcare and business experience to work for our medical community and local businesses. Whether you have an expanding physician practice, an existing business, or hoping to start a new business, I have the financial prescription for you. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ida. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what healthcare should be. Our next guest, his team led him to his 450th coaching victory the other night at the Chester Tournament. It's Coach Rick Metcalf. Coach, congratulations. Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. 450, is that the accurate count? Did you go back and verify all those? <laughs> yeah, 450, I, I believe, is right on, right on target. 
So that would be Joppa, Sesser, Vianna Boys, and also Sesser, Valera, Waltonville Girls, correct? That's correct. And you've been yeah, around, what, 10 years? That's not a bad record. Yeah, he's 22 now as a head coach, and I guess 29 overall. You know, the, the bad thing about that is, you know, the, there's 450 wins, but I tend to remember the 145 losses a little bit more. I, you remember those wins and those losses, obviously, but is there a particular win boys or girls side that just kind of stands out like, yeah, that's the one I remember the most? Um, you know, just right when you said that, you know, what first came to my head, you know, the, to be honest with you, there was a couple of them uh, with our rivalry against Walmville back in the day. You yes. know, when I was the boys coach at Sessor, um, you know, we had some great games. The first game that I ever coached um, for Sessor back in 1990 was at Waltonville. Um, I found out later on that uh, Sessor didn't beat Waltonville the 10 previous years at Waltonville. At halftime, we were down 18 points. And, uh, you know, things just weren't going right. And um, it, I always tell my players, if you see something, you know, if I was an NBA coach or anything like that, I'd be there, but I'm not. I'm a high school coach. So if you see something, come and tell me. Had this kid sitting at the end of the bench, David Smith, senior, didn't play a lick, comes up and says, Coach, why don't you try two offense? Well, it was a, a zone offense, and at that time Ed was playing a man. I thought, what the heck, nothing else was working. You know, tried it, put Scott Brzezinski at the high post, Brian Lahr, and Joe Huey ran the baseline. We won the game by 13 points. That was my, uh, down 18 and won by 13. And to this day, I give sole credit to that kid for coming up saying it because I wasn't, I wasn't went to that offense. But that one probably sticks out the most. So... Should we tell where that season ended up or just let it go at this point? Well, you can say where it ended up going because about 10 years later, I had a coach from Wallville tell me that he actually had five illegal players out there at the same time if yeah. you want to go that route. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll go this route and we'll go down to your team. After that win on th- Thursday night, you get Alvarado, a team from your conference. You get to play in a championship again in New Athens, against New Athens at Chester tonight and at 7 p.m. That's a big game for you and your program, try to pull a little repeat action over at Chester. Right. You know, um, you know, we've pretty much been doing it without a true center. We've got Rachel Morrow playing the five spot for us, and they're pretty solid. New Athens is at the five. They've got a girl averaging right at 20. So, you know, that's going to be, you know, we're going to have to do that on the defensive end. But, uh, you know, we're looking forward to the challenge. You know, even though most of my team are, are made up of sophomores and juniors, we're, uh, I, I consider ourselves a veteran lot because they've all been starting since their freshman year. So, you know, we're feeling pretty confident about it going into it. Speaking of confidence, you get possibly a win tonight. But then the schedule's compacted, and we've been talking about this with coaches. Trico at home, Goreville on the road next week. Two very tough games for the West Frankfurt tournament. Everything kind of compacted right now, and you're dealing not with one team but with two teams and two schools. How do you keep everybody happy, keep everybody going, as far as both teams being uh, your team, both schools, players from both schools, on their game and edgy instead of getting flat and monotonous here this time of year? Well, you know, it, um, our, our schedule in January is kind of different. We were talking about it yesterday. It's almost like an NBA schedule. If I did the, if I did the math right, we got like 11 games, like in 18 days, and that's including Sundays. So we've only got to prepare for two games, two days, and the rest of them are like you play. You play um, one practice, then you play, you know, from here on out. So almost a shade less than 50% of our schedule is just in the month of January. You know, and from a coaching standpoint, you know, if if you don't know everything that you need to know now, um, you know, sure you got to work on your timing, you know, things of that nature. But we've been very fortunate over the first, my first two years, we haven't had any major injuries. Ankles, knees, backs, and we haven't been sick that often. Now, of course, you know, in the month of January, that would be devastating if we had a couple go down with the stomach flu or something like that because there's so many games. But, uh, you know, we've been fortunate. You know, and how do I keep them happy? Uh, winning seems to take care of that. Speaking of taking care of that, looking on down the road, obviously the West Frankfurt tournament, that's a tough matchup. Pinckneyville in there as well before you get back to at Chester, Ducoin on the road. That's a game we will do. Alvarado, Goreville at home at ZR at the end of the year. Tough ending. But then we haven't talked to you or had you on the show since the regional sites were assigned and teams were sent there. A very difficult regional for you and everybody else at ZRC this year. 
Yeah, you know, we really haven't talked too much about it. You know, some of the girls kind of muttered, you know, about uh, Nashville coming down. You know, I, I just think that someone does a, didn't take a geography class. It's the only thing I can think of. You know, Nashville comes down our way, and I think they, they may play Benton once. You know, that's not what I consider a regional, but, you know, I'm not the one that makes those decisions. But, you know, we'll just go there and play them, you know, the old saying, just one at a time and see, we'll see what happens. Is that a case of where that line is in Illinois, where pop becomes soda on geography? Uh, I, I would say you're probably right on that. <laughs> well, I look at this. We go to West Frankfurt. Talk about the teams in there. I know Pinkneyville's in there, obviously Frankfurt. But that's been a tough schedule and a tough tournament for teams over the years. SV has had a lot of success there over the years, even though they're one of the smaller schools there. Right. You know, um, Heron is in it, and uh, they've had a bad um, stretch of luck here. Um, the point guard Johnson and Horn both went down with sprained ankles last week. So you take out uh, truly the, one of the best ones and probably the best five person in Southern Illinois, and Pigneyville snuck up on them and, and got it. You know, and West Frankfurt's always tough over at their place. So you know that for whatever reason, even when I was a boys coach, you know, we played in the midwinter thing at West Frankfurt. You, you just take your game up a step or two. You know, we're you know black diamond. You know, and I always try to get my kids up a little bit more for the River River opponents. You know, for even if it's not true, we tend to like to think that they look down upon us a little bit. You know, and try to use that to my advantage. Try to use that to your advantage, and your advantage is this: we'll go to our WMAX Sports social media question of the week, and basically, it's pretty cut and dry. Have you broken any New Year's resolutions yet? No, well, of course. <laughs> yeah, why make them right if you can't break them? Yeah, I thought you were going to ask me something, you know, that I could give you a, a response like I've given you the last couple times. Well, I mean, are you, I mean, uh, I'll ask you this. I'll go another question off topic. The Bears get rid of Lovey Smith of a ten and six year. You're a diehard Chicago sports fan. Where does that stand out? Should they have done it, or should they have stayed status quo? Oh, four years ago they should have did it. <laughs> oh, you you know patience for you, huh? No, you know, the, the defense is, is pretty solid, but we need to get an offensive coordinator in there. Well, I, let me ask, i got no, one more. Infamous flagpole in your, at your house. What's, what flag is flying right now? The <laughs> no, Bears, no, no, there Bulls? You go. No, right now, the flag that I have been flying oh, for I the last two weeks, go Irish, uh, Notre Dame. I figure, yeah, that's because your neighbor down the road's brainwashed you is probably why. Well, I, I've got, I'm a Notre Dame guy. Isn't you know, everybody right where now? Where I'm from, up in Kent, Illinois, you say anything bad about Notre Dame, you're taking your life in your hands. I, I, that's true. Southern Illinois for them in Kankakee, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Coach Metcalf, good luck tonight in the uh, the finals of the Chester Tournament against New Athens. Okay. Thanks for having me on, guys. That's Rick Metcalf. 450 wins. Wait Impressive. Was it Coach Metcalf or Coach Van Horn? That's inside joke. Oh, my. Yeah, there's an inside joke to that. I just forgot he's not still with us for that. Yeah, I'll <laughs> tell you on the break. It was wow. a mis- misidentification of Coach Metcalf and Coach Van Horn recently that got a lot of draw in the hospitality Let's see, I hospitality room slash SV Commons area the other day. It was quite the riot. Oh, my. Yeah. That said, we need to take a break here on the Saturday Sports Show. Come back with Waltonville Spartans head coach Brian Gamber. His team got a cross-county victory last night. Over Weber Township, you heard it on WMIX-FM. You'll find the archive of that broadcast already on WMIXSports.com. We'll take a break. Presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Back after these. America is a nation on wheels. Everyone has at least one automobile. We use them for shopping, work, everything we do. But they can be a threat. Some accidents can't be prevented. Your professional Pekin Insurance Agency, Page Insurance on Crown View and Mount Vernon, can help protect you from a large financial loss when an accident happens. Call Page Insurance today at 242-7000 about low-cost auto insurance from Pekin Insurance. Ask them about the many money-saving discounts that are available. Depend on your hometown professionals. Pekin Insurance. Hi, this is Star Reed with People's National Bank in Mount Vernon. People's National Bank is focused on providing the best possible customer service and products to meet the needs of our customers. If you aren't receiving the products and service you deserve, maybe it's time to make a change. Change the name of your bank for the last time and make the switch to People's National Bank. People's National Bank, proudly serving Southern Illinois since 1909, member FDIC. 
When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com, presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Glad to have all of you with us. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at WMIX Sports. We're on Facebook as well. Find us there. We have managed to find Brian Gamber, head coach of the Waltonville Spartans, his team a 45-35 winner last night over Weber Township. Coach Gamber, good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? You're Very pretty well. good. Got to see your game last night. Got to put it on the air on WMIX-FM, cross-county battle against the Weber Trojans and Spartans. One of those games where they start out pretty good in the first half, were able to do enough in the second half to get the victory, but all in all, it's a victory in the Midland Trail Conference. You guys are still just the one loss there, and probably looking for that number two seed in the uh, conference tournament. Absolutely. And, you know, that's kind of what we told our guys uh, before last night. Uh, it, it was a big game because with, with uh, I think, us and Sisney are going to be real close for who gets that two seed. I know Sisney slipped up and they got beat Thursday night. Uh, so we felt like if we could come out and uh, get a big conference win at home, we'd have a chance to get that two seat for the Midland Trail Conference Tournament. And I really felt like our guys did a, a good job last night. Uh, we were trying to obviously speed the game up a little bit and put some pressure on, on their guards, try to get some turnovers and get out and get some easy baskets. And I thought we did that for the most part. I felt like the third quarter we did a really nice job of that. Uh, and then in the fourth quarter, uh, I felt like we took some quick shots and, and, and they kind of got back in the game. Um, but, you know, it, it was a, a big conference game. Any conference win is a good win. Uh, and for us to be able to get last night, maybe get that number two seed, and like you said, stay uh, with just having that one loss, uh, you know, you never know if Woodlawn could slip up against somebody and they still have a chance for the regular season conference championship. When you look at the game last night, and your young coaching career halfway through the first year of being a head coach. Was this a very difficult game to coach looking down the sideline there at a co-worker coaching Weber Township, and he was there at Waltonville last year? Was that kind yeah. of a different feel to the game? It was. It was. It, it was a little bit different. Um, I, you know, it's, the thing is, once the, once the game starts, I really don't even realize who's on the other sideline, or I don't really pay attention. I'm just worried about all of our stuff. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely, I mean, obviously there's a lot of things that I'm experiencing for the first time. That was definitely another one. Um, but, you know, he's a he's a, a really good guy. And, I mean, you know, we get along fine at, at school, and we're always talking basketball and different things. Um, so I just tried to kind of block that out and just, you know, focus on our guys and not worry about that stuff. But, yeah, I mean, it was. It is a little bit different. I'm sure he would say the same thing, that it was different for him to be back. Uh, at Wallenville where not only he teaches, but, you know, he's coached for the last several years. Um, so, yeah, it, it was a little bit different. Am I glad that, that that one is over? I am glad that it's over. Um, but, you know, for the most part, like I said, I, I was extremely happy with our guys. I thought we played hard. I thought we battled defensively. Um, and, you know, and they did a nice job trying to, you know, slowly game down and kind of junk it up, playing some triangle and two and boxing one and different things, and trying to take away the Widgets and the Hill Kid, which, we kind of knew they were going to. Um, but, yeah, it did, it did have a different feel. It was a little bit awkward. Um, I'm glad it's over with, and I'm glad that our kids came out and, and battled and, and got a big win for us. Was it kind of a trap game, I mean, for your team, coming off the holiday tournament win in fifth place, Oakville coming next Tuesday, Weber team probably your favorite against. Was it basically a trap game uh, as you head into your schedule part of January? Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, and, you know, that's kind of why we wanted to try to, to build up, you know, trying to get that number two seed and, and the fact that, you know, our seniors, we only have four home games left. So, you know, for them, it's important for them to come out and play hard and do things the right way every home game that we have because, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a big deal playing at home. And, and these seniors, they need to enjoy these last four or five home games. Uh, and so we really wanted to focus on that because, like you said, it would be easy to look 
you know, all Tuesday night. We got Oakville coming in here, who's just a handful. I mean, they are just a very, very good basketball team. Uh, so we really tried to build up last night that it was a big game, and, and it was. I mean, to me, it was a, a, a big game. Trying to get that two seed uh, and to stay with just one loss in the conference and take care of business at home. Uh, we just wanted to keep Oakville, you know, on Tuesday night. And I worry about them come in today and, and, and focus on them. And I felt like our guys did, did a nice job. I felt like in the fourth quarter we kind of let up a little bit when we got that big lead uh, and kind of let them cut into it. But for the most part, you know, I mean, it, ten point game. I felt like uh, we did a pretty nice job of, of keeping it between you know ten and fifteen uh, most of the second half, which is where it needs to be. Well, I look at your team, and we've watched it all year at the games, and we have done several of them, and we're going to do a lot more, obviously. Your team has gotten a lot deeper with the likes of Winchester coming off the bench, Zom getting starts now. This is a team that is starting to develop and kind of find their role as it goes along. Yeah, yes, you're exactly right. And we've had a lot of guys step up, and that's just going to make us that much better as we continue Um like you said, the, the Zom kid and, and Winchester and Laird's done a nice job stepping in the starting role, and now we got Coggins and Matt Rogers coming off the bench, getting minutes. Uh, all those guys bring a little something different to the table whenever they get in there. Uh, and, you know, to, to be that versatile and, and to give us different looks and different options, uh, it's going to make us a lot better as, as we move forward and, and make our push towards, you know, postseason play. Um all of those guys, you know, like like Austin Tom. I mean, he, he's a guy that he had several games in the holiday tournament where I thought he was the difference, and I thought he was the reason why we won. Uh, and he did not score a point, and that's what I'm trying to get our guys, you know, to, to believe that that they can affect the game and change the game and really make us a pretty good basketball team. And it has nothing to do with stepping in and scoring points. Um, and, and even our other guys, you know, even. Jordan and Trey that, that have scored a lot of points for us this year, they've got to know that teams are going to try to focus and take them away just like last night. And just because you don't score a lot of points doesn't mean that, that you, you're not playing well. It doesn't mean that you're not affecting the game. Uh, they've got to be able to do other things, uh, rebounding and defensively stepping up and doing a nice job. Uh, and, and we've been very fortunate that, that guys have stepped in and, and played hard and played well and, and done things right. And we got to keep having that. If we want to be good, if we want to be able to beat really good people, we're going to have to have contributions from uh, a lot more guys than just two or three or four. Uh, we're going to have to go to our bench and give guys breathers. And, and last night we had a lot of guys step up and play really well defensively, got some steals, got some layups. Uh, we're going to have to keep doing that. Speaking of keeping doing that, we'll have that Oakville game on Tuesday night on the FM side at WMIXSports.com. But we keep doing it here with our WMIX Sports social media question of the week, and it is... Have you broken any New Year's resolutions yet? Oh, boy. You know, I, I actually I have. I've been trying to cut down on the Mountain Dew, uh, and I told myself I'm going to limit myself starting out to two a day, and I got to admit, last night, I, I think I had about four Mountain Dews last night. Dang, so, gosh. Yeah. That's yeah. Clint Turner-like right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I'd like to say that I keep all of mine, but no, I'm str- I'm struggling right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the important thing is that the Spartans seem to be rolling at the right time. Coach, good luck the rest of the way, and we look forward to talking to you again soon. All right, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. That's Brian Gamber. Of course, his Waltonville Spartans have the Oakville Rockets on Tuesday night. That's where you'll find the Jefferson County Basketball Showcase. <coughs> Boy. Cough's coming up for the going worst. going around. Yeah, it is. He just kind of came up me? on me yesterday. Yeah. I mean, all day, all day long at school and came at home and ate. Well, I have a and all of a sudden so- I got up to go to the game. It was like, there it is. Well, I have a random sore spot on the right side of my tongue from where I burnt it on something. And so it's making talking impe- impeccably difficult right now. So I have to be careful about my word selection. We all know those issues. Um, what do we have now? Deirdre Dag, of course, Midland Trail Conference Girls Tournament. We'll talk about that. Wayne City hosting this year the second and trophy round games of the MTC term. We'll talk about that when we come back here on the Saturday Sports Show presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. Back after these. 
Think it's too late to get into spring classes at Ren Lake College? No worries. Walk-in spring registration continues January 2nd through the 11th. Trained academic counselors will make sure you're on the right path, whether you plan to transfer to a four-year university or head straight into the workforce. With more than 100 degrees and certificate programs available, Ren Lake College offers the education you need without the big university price tag. Call us at 437-5221. That's 437-5321. Or find out which program is right for you at rlc.edu. Hi, this is Star Reed with People's National Bank in Mount Vernon. People's National Bank is focused on providing the best possible customer service and products to meet the needs of our customers. If you aren't receiving the products and service you deserve, maybe it's time to make a change. Change the name of your bank for the last time and make the switch to People's National Bank. People's National Bank, proudly serving Southern Illinois since 1909, member FDIC. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency... Call 911. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. Of course, as we prepare to talk about Wayne City Lady Indians basketball, as well as the Midland Trail Conference Tournament with Coach D'Arder Dag. Coach, good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to the Saturday Sports Show. Thank you. <laughs> the Lady Indians, of course, on a roll this season, and, and we'll go into the Midland Trail Conference Tournament with a three seed. You did have a game this past Thursday night, however, against Hamco after a, a nice appearance, I would say, in the Merry Mule Christmas Tournament at Fairfield. But uh, Lady Indians, though they lost the other night, still playing some good basketball against some tough competition. Yes, we, we've had a couple, um, the last couple of weeks have been a really tough um, break for us. We, we played Oakville, we played Susser. We played the Fairfield tournament, which we, you know, met up with Flora, um, which is really a, a tough team. And then we played Hamilton County last night, which Thursday night, which I think we played excellent. We played the best we could. We were down by three at halftime and just had a bad quarter. That third quarter, about five minutes in, we just we couldn't make anything and, and seemed to lose some focus. But they played extremely well. We are ready for the conference tournament to start. Speaking of being ready of a three seed against Sisney, yeah. how, how important is that for Wayne City High School and the girls' program to have an event and host the Midland Trail Conference Tournament? It is awesome, it, especially this year. We have not had many home games. Uh, Mallory and I were just talking. I don't think our last home game was beginning of December, so it's been a while. We've been on the road a lot, um, and for us to hold to host it is just great for us. <clears throat> we hosted it four years, I guess, three years ago, my first year. Um, and it went extremely well, so we're super excited about it this year. Of course, the tournament goes from Sydney to Wayne City this year, and you can kind of take a look at the seeds with Sandal the one, North Clay the two, which was almost upset by number five Weber at Blueford um, a few weeks ago. But taking a look at this tournament, are the, are the seedings kind of what you expected they would be? They are. They are exactly what I expected to be. Um, North Clay has not lost a game, though, that they came close to at Weber. Um, they are still undefeated in the conference, and so is Sandoval. Sandoval is extremely tough, and um, that's who you know we're going to have to look at. We've not played North Clay yet, so I'm not sure exactly you know where we'll match up with them. But to, you know we're excited about it. We're ready. We we really think we have a good opportunity this week. Good opportunity this week. Get a couple wins under your belt and. Maybe mm-hmm. get that tournament championship as well. But as we look toward the end of the season, after this tournament, some conference games, Fairfield once again on the schedule along with NCOE, and then Waltonville, I guess, at the end. This is an interesting – actually, it's boys. But anyway, interesting <laughs> schedule for yours as I'm looking through a bunch of papers. But still, you've played a lot of different tough teams to go through conference-wise and non-conference-wise to get you ready for a postseason. We do. We play a lot of non-conference games that are so tough. And, you know, like – the, the girls are always asking, why are we playing teams like this? You know, why do we – it only makes us better to be playing these tough teams. And, yes, we, we get beat by them, and, and it, sometimes it hurts. But when it comes down to postseason, we'll be ready. You know, we'll, we have seen and we have played against tougher teams than what we'll see at regionals. So we'll be ready. 
Gallatin County and Red Hill on that, along with conference games down the stretch. Only a couple home games after this tournament. That's huge as far as this tournament, as you mentioned. But, again, we only have only two home games down the stretch. How hard will it be to keep your team mentally ready to be on the road and on the ball's long bus rides? It, it, is, it is extremely tough. And if you look at our schedule, we travel quite a bit um, at distance, too. Nothing's really close for us. Um, it is tough, but with girls, you can, you know, they turn on that radio and they get fired up and ready to go as soon as we get off that bus. They're usually ready. Um we usually play better on the road than we do at home for some reason. So it's not a big ordeal for us, but it is nice to be at home once in a while. Well, and of course, you know, you're talking about that schedule down the stretch, and, you know, pretty soon we'll be talking about regional seedings. Mm-hmm. And you guys right now, for all intents and purposes, playing for that number one seed in the Alvarado 1A Regional. We have Galatia to play um, January 14th is when we play Galatia. Um, that's the only thing we've not seen yet. We do. We you know we have to take care of business there so we can get that number one seed. Um, Weber has improved though. You know I haven't seen. We haven't played them since the beginning of the year, and I know they've improved. And we just have to come ready to play. We really look good for our regional. Yes. And of course, that Mid- Midland Trail Conference tournament will be at Wayne City starting on January 10th. Teams play at the higher seed on the seventh. And good luck to Wayne City in hosting that tournament, Coach. And we look Thank forward to you. seeing you again real soon. Yes. That would be oh, oh, I forgot something. The W Mike Sports Social Media Question of yeah. the Week. I was trying yeah. to delay it as long as possible because I know you're one to cheat yesterday and try to get it ahead of time. I was trying. You didn't help me out much. <laughs> no. Our question this week is, have you broken any New Year's resolutions yet? You know, I only made a couple this year. and uh, Normally, I don't even make any. And no, I have not. I'm, I, in the summer, I started doing kickboxing at, at Pedagogy Submission Fighting. And when the season started, I kind of had to take it off. And I've now gotten to where I can go once a week and so that's that is my goal is to make sure that I am there at least once a week during season and then afterwards I can get back to my normal schedule but I you know trying to get myself back in shape and, and be ready to go I play with these girls all day long so you know they, they help a lot with that as well awesome this yeah. you're probably the first one that has not broken their resolution yeah. yet well I'm probably the first female you talk to as females you know we're pretty <laughs> good at, at keeping to our goals Right? <laughs> you are absolutely Agreed. right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being nice. We, well, we are not stupid either here here <laughs> in the studio. So, <laughs> But uh, we uh, look, we really look forward to seeing you again again soon and trying to find a, a Wayne City game that we can get on the schedule before the season's I, over. I'm, I'm, I'm bummed you guys can't be there, but it'll be great. We'll let you guys know how it goes. Well, nobody was probably more peeved than, than I was, I think, with that. But, uh, uh, you know, last year it just worked out so well where it was right after New Year's Day and you know, hopefully yeah, they next pushed year. it back this year. You know, the, for the second week, which is nice. You know, years past, we've always just jumped right into it. We've not had any games or anything to go into. So this year will be so much nicer for us um, having games before our conference tournament starts. Definitely, and of course, you guys yes. will have Sisney on Monday night. Good luck. Yes, thank you so much. We'll that, see you guys. That's Deirdre Dag, head coach of the Wayne City Lady Indians, and they are the three seed. In the Midland Trail Conference Sermon, Sandoval, the number one, gets a bye. Number two, North Clay, plays number seven, West Richland. Uh, number three, Wayne City, of course, and number six, Sisney. And then number four, Woodlawn hosts Weber, the five seed, on Monday at 7 o'clock at Sides Gymnasium. But we... Mm-hmm. Another tournament today, too, going on, we got to mention. Of course, we That's can't forget that. We can... 27 teams will be participating at the ICCA cheerleading event at Benton High School today, all day long. Some who's who's of Southern Illinois cheerleading teams down there. A lot going on. We also have our very own Lady Devils playing for a championship tonight at the Chester Tournament as SVW will take on New Athens in that championship game. So obviously we wish all of our teams good luck and wherever they go, but cheerleading is a big thing. I, we have one more break. We can come back talk a little bit more about that ICCA tournament in Benton uh, here in just a moment on the Saturday Sports Show presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. After some early season success, the Rams and Lady Rams find themselves looking for more wins in 2013. Hi, I'm Rick Pig, Vice President of Community First Bank of the Heartland. With more South 7 Conference play and midwinter tournaments on the horizon, WMIX and WMIXSports.com has all the action. See what baby New Year has in store for Mount Vernon Rams and Lady Rams basketball on WMIX. Powered by Community First Banks of the Heartland, welcome back to Personal Banking. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy offers convenience and great service, all for the same cost. 
Our pharmacy staff is so helpful. They're always ready to answer any questions you may have. You'll never wait hours for your prescription. We'll get you in and out in just minutes. Or, for added convenience, use one of our two drive through windows. For those folks who prefer to stay home, our delivery service will bring the medications to your front door or your workplace. Here's pharmacist and pharmacy owner Eric Black to tell you more. Home delivery does make us stand out from the crowd. Independents, uh, like the medicine shop, offer home delivery. People find that so convenient. And not just seniors, uh, but also busy professionals. Delivery to work or to their home once they get home in the evenings. It's just a, a service that sets us apart from our competition, absolutely. It's so easy to transfer your prescriptions. All it takes is a phone call from you, and we'll take care of the rest. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy accepts Medco, TRICARE, Express Scripts, and many other 90-day plans. The Medicine Shop, 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon. Think it's too late to get into spring classes at Ren Lake College? No worries. Walk-in spring registration continues January 2nd through the 11th. Trained academic counselors will make sure you're on the right path, whether you plan to transfer to a four-year university or head straight into the workforce. With more than 100 degrees and certificate programs available, Ren Lake College offers the education you need without the big university price tag. Call us at 437-5221. That's 437-5321. Or find out which program is right for you at rlc.edu. Back to the Saturday Sports Show we are, presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be, Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> if, that was, if that liner wasn't verbatim, I was going to try to mix that up, but then I ended up confusing myself. and trying to end The it. force was with you. It was. I do that every once in a while. But uh, you, you hit the nail right on the head. There is This is about the time, you know, talking some cheerleading here on the Saturday Sports Show. This is the time where ICCA and IHSA competitions yeah. really start to heat up. And I know you mentioned, um, I believe it's a regional at Benton today. Oh, 27 teams. And uh, we're actually, I think, two weeks away now. On January the 19th, this is a big soiree at, Mount, at Shagnon Gym. And that thing, you want to talk about massive. That is massive. And, you know, reg- not regional, but it's like Region 5, I think is actually what that is and, and you know so you have the the big soiree at benton today you have one at and i mean these are all over the place this is the busy time right now you're talking not just saturday events you're talking sunday events as well and i mean i, I just don't think people understand how big these events are and how many cheer teams you'll find at well them. it is a sport because the ihsa has deemed itself so that's why I've they have agree it. that it is and it takes athletes to do this <laughs> you, 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 I or you are not going to be able to get out here no, and do you this. You and I are not going to be sitting Never on top have of pyramid will or be. under a pyramid anytime soon. Um, some of these teams I'm looking here use it as to get scores for the ICCA, and some have already qualified and use it for practice and comments from judges. There's junior high and high school teams there today both because this ICA stretches forever. Of course, I look more to the IHSA since the IHSA now considers that a sport or a sporting event as I like to call it, because to me there are three types. They sports. finally recognize yeah. how I see it. Why I look at it, there's sports, sporting events, and sporting inter- sports entertainment, so three different things. But, I, you know, again, it's it's a big event at Benton High School Day, junior high and high school teams going around, and it'll go over to Springfield eventually when this is all said and done, and wish the best of luck, because a lot of teams will go there today and work, and then they'll have to go to games, which, which they should do, but they will go to games later on tonight and cheer for their teams. Well, and... You know, you mentioned that big event in Springfield with the ICCA, the ultimate goal, of course, and at the PCCCCCC, the Prairie Capital Convention Center, and that'll be February 9th and 10th, if I'm not mistaken. It's usually the second, second uh, Saturday, mm-hmm. Friday and Saturday, Saturday and Sunday thereabouts, if I remember correctly. But you know, we were talking about it last night on the showcase with uh, Weber and Waltonville, and talking about just the great cheerleading talent, the great cheer talent in the we have had. Just in this county, and then you you kind of grow that to include you know Cessers had some great teams over mm-hmm. the years. Pinckneyville's had some great cheer teams. Bad over girls, the years. Of, wait a yeah, bad girls of the south. There you go. Yeah, I had T-shirts, black shirts with silver lettering. Those things were dominant in the late nineties, early two oh, yeah. thousands. Well, and then you think about Mount Vernon and their four state championships in ninety seven, oh three, oh eight, oh nine. Woodlawn's got some trophies. Um, of course, Rachel Thomas, who was at Woodlawn's now at Waltonville, I noticed last night. I did not realize that, of course. Went to high school with her. Um, and then you just kind of take a look at and, and uh, how how much growth there is in cheer. Because you look at, at, at Corn from Pinckneyville, who ended up at Southern 
you know, you know, coaching the, the Saluki mm-hmm. cheer. So there is a lot of talent here in Southern Illinois, and we've even had some locals go on to some success cheering in college. And I, I'm trying to think. We had a girl recently go to UK, didn't we, from somewhere close? Uh, Centralia. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, some of these teams are getting up for, you know, like 9 a.m. start, having to get up 5, 6 a.m. to get there again. That's nothing like high you. school teams can't do. I mean, we want to credit them as well. Well, and and hopefully not overblowing at this point. But, yeah. you know, I, I, I think of countless times, home game on, at Shagnon Gymnasium on a Friday night, you'd see the Mount Vernon Rams cheerleaders uh, bring – bring lunch boxes and you know pillows and blankets and things like that so they could sleep on a cheese headed up to Springfield on Friday night so they could be up super duper early on a Saturday morning to cheer and I just don't think that it Here, it gets enough respect. Here's what goes unmentioned is all these cheerleading teams especially in football they have to go out there in the weather. There's no breaks. There's no hiding. There's nothing. They're out there. We saw that this year with Mount Vernon. Had a couple of wet, Which game cold was home that? games. Was it the Kokia game? Kokia or? game. They were there the cold? entire time where the same night I heard other cheerleading teams go away, yeah. go home because it's too cold, too wet at other games. Right. Mount Vernon didn't. They stayed there, and that's that got me very impressed to see them. They're hardcore. Yes, they are. You bet they They'll are. They'll be serious in this ICCA and IHSA. And you know, they're very talented as well. And you know, four-time state champions as we talked about, and hopefully that. That trend continues and get another trophy this year. Um, moving on, of course, we talked a little bit about the Midland Trail Girls Tournament. Of course, best of luck. We have three teams that we regularly feature on the showcase in that tournament with Woodlawn, Weber, and Wayne City. Um, as far as our other showcase girls team, we have the SVW Lady Devils. I saw some of them in the house last night as Waltonville was playing Weber Township. Um, they have a big game tonight trying to win yet another tournament this year. And, you know, that's, you know, we talk about the West Frankfurt tournament with them, Pinckneyville, Heron. And I think it's kind of understated just how good of a tournament that's going to be. And, you know, with Heron having a couple out to injury, that kind of takes on a new perspective as well. Well, it does. And another tweet about what they look at compared to IHSA to ICCA, different judging techniques going on. So, you know, Waltonville and Weber last night heading into Midland Trail. One week, then the tournament. It's it's just anything set up. I don't think you want to be a two or three seed in that baby set up at all you want to be a one or a four you want to stay from that away from that two and three because that could be a sisney waltonville kind of thing or a sisney whoever well and here's the thing and i'm glad we're talking about this now because i really don't want to have to talk about this next week because by next week we'll know a little bit more about how it's going to be set up you have waltonville back in the fold you have the co-op ceasing it's done between clay city and west richland as we know Mm-hmm. So you have 11 teams in the Midland Trail Conference. We had a 12-team bracket at one in the very first year with Waltonville, South Central, everybody but Dieterich still in. So you had the 12-team bracket then. But when it went to 10, the first five or six got a buy into the second round, as they called it. Instead of referring to them as play-in games, they became second-round games for everybody else with a buy. Right. You know, uh, this year I guess you just take one of those buys away from one of the other seeds. And, right. but, you're, but you're looking at a case this year where, you know, six will battle 11 instead of six getting a bye. That's exactly how it'll work out. But it's going to be a much different element to the Midland Trail Conference tournament this year because, you know, it's kind of been our one gripe as, from a coverage standpoint of is, well, Waltonville goes to Nashville. We can never really go over there to do a game, but we get to have Waltonville back in the fold this year. Mm-hmm. And that's going to bring an interesting element because the only two, the only year that we've had Woodlawn, Waltonville, and Webb are both in it, they all three performed pretty well, so we're looking forward to maybe some Jefferson County success again this year. Yeah, especially on multiple nights, you yeah. know, and hopefully that'll be the case with that going on and the North Clay and back and whatnot, and we'll see what happens as far as that goes. Well, and we hope to have those pairings come next week on the Saturday Sports Show Midwinter Tournament Preview. We also hope to have Salem by then. I'm sure we will. Um, we do have the Carbondale Midwinter Tournament. We'll talk about that with Jeff Lana next week as the Lady Rams will take on Ducoin at 7.30 on January the 14th. We don't want to spoil too much fun there. We'll talk about that next week, of course, here on the Saturday Sports Show. But We've hit January. We've hit the time that we're already sort of talking about Midwinter Tournaments, which means the apex of the basketball season pretty well here. It's almost over. <laughs> Hard to believe as we're after the Midwinter Tournament, we're going to hit the, the bump of January and then head into February. And it's kind of that second week of February you start seeing the regional start for girls basketball. You know. It's hard to believe we're almost there. I, it's the way the calendar falls. And, you know, this year, actually, the inauguration of the president will be on the 20th on a Sunday instead of the Monday, which is kind of odd. But anyway, that's kind of how the fa- calendar works. And it's a condensed calendar because usually what I remember is 
the state tournament at Peoria and 1A and 2A fall the same weekend as the conference basketball tournaments, the major ones. Hey, they're off this, this year. This year they're off as the conference tournaments will be the week after. So, you know, when you look at what's going on, you have – tournaments ending you got about three days of basketball for boys friday thursday friday saturday a full week next week and then midwinter and then after that it goes quick i mean it's hard to believe in two weeks which will be two weeks from the day the midwinter tournaments will be wrapped up and it'll be full regular season after that and then everybody has had a tournament this year which is about 175 schools uh kidding of course and there's more to come at least two more we've heard of at least at christmas time or the week after that's wanting to start up that more of these tournaments, more of this stuff. We've seen some odd scheduling already. We've seen more JV teams than we care to mention in tournaments. But, you know, it's one of those deals. Everybody's moving around, shaking and baking, trying to get things done. There's talk of conference shakeups again with teams doing some different things. So, again, it's all around bouncing around out there what's going to happen. Well, and, and you talk about some of these tournaments and, and movers and shakers and things like that. I think with JV, and that was one of our rants earlier before the basketball season started, was our qualifications on when your tournament should disappear, I believe, is kind of how we worded it that day. But, you know, the JV team, we, we talked about that. You know, if that's in your tournament, it should be done. It was a real shock to me at Mascuda, and I talked about this on the 22nd, to see Centralia JV in that tournament. And that's that's nothing towards Roger Steeg and the no. Annies. He's a great coach up there, and they do a great thing. And it's an awkward position for everybody to be in, but I was just so surprised to see the Mascuda, a premier girls' holiday basketball tournament, have to have a JV team. You are going to see a lot of feelings hurt over the next year, two, three years, where teams are in tournaments for umpteen years and cut out, or teams don't tell the other host schools that they're leaving until it's too late, or teams go off and make their own tournament at the same time and try to compete. I mean, you're seeing a lot of cutthroat work going on for everybody trying to find the quote-unquote perfect fit tournament, and unfortunately it just can't happen, folks. There's too many tournaments right now. There's more coming at both Thanksgiving, Christmas, and midwinter. It's a shame it has to go on this way. It's a shame that you got got t- tournaments in high schools that are going to play that game with people and, and not be very nice and not hold deals and handshakes and contracts. And it's it's an unfortunate situation and time we live in where everybody wants to be even and wants to compete and win, but it's hard to do that everywhere in the world of sports. Well, and guaranteed games is becoming another factor in terms of seeking tournaments and you know, are we feelings are, are, getting hurt for whatever we, reason leads to other things? How far away are we from bracketed tournaments even disappearing and everything just going around robins or, or pool play? Well, the bracketed tournaments are okay if you can get at least three in. Sure, I know. Well, some schools only have two, and if but you can win one at least. You're, you're right. Good. You're guaranteed three. I, you know, I think your 16 team brackets like at Cesar Valer, El Dorado are going to stay. I think Carbondale has to look at the fact that yeah, they got some very good teams in that tournament, but. They have sponsors to control the money side of the issue. Uh, you know, you look at Wayne City, who's went from 18 to 16 to a pool bracket play over 60 years of that tournament. Centralia will still be 16. Lots of teams want to come there. So you have some tournaments that are not going to be affected. You have some tournaments that are going to bring in some JV teams. It's just a case of I think a lot of feelings are going to get hurt over this where teams leave for another or start their own and other schools are going to be left out in the gold. There's a midwinter tournament next year. It's hanging in the balance right now because they have to find other teams. Well, and I, I kind of look at Centralia, and I respect what they do because they don't have to sell the naming rights to it to keep the great teams that they have coming into it. And, and that's, I mean, yes, they do have in gymnasium sponsorships and, and advertising opportunities, things like that. But um, just just the job that they do up there, and you know, there's going to be some that come about, and there's going to be plenty of great tournaments around. But there's just a, a handful, a pinch, a, a tad too many of these things, all times of year between Thanksgiving, midwinter, and uh, and the hot Christmas holiday. Of course, of course, I'm anti-conference tournament. That's here nor there. I am too, but that's here nor there. I think if you play a team I, twice, that should be plenty. I, I I think those times have gone where you can get regular season games in. That said. The way, we the, still enjoy the way the MTC tournament is set up, I do like that. I mean, as far as a conference tournament, I, I do like how they do it since they only play each other once. That, I'm okay with that on, on a different level. But we hope you've enjoyed the Saturday Sports Show this morning. We'll be back again next week to preview the midwinter tournaments in basketball. We'll also try to talk some more cheerleading uh, as well with the Mount Vernon thing coming up on January 19th. This is WMIX Mount Vernon. We'll see you next week.